Another amazing day. Another amazing day. At Harman. At a, Harman. A Samsung company. We like it here a lot. Yeah. In the chamber. Yeah. Chamber. I think we were meant to be locked in the chamber together, James. The anechoic chamber at Harman Labs is one of the quietest and most controlled audio environments on planet Earth. Here's how Harman's chamber helped Audio Test Kitchen achieve our mission to empower you to audition and compare 300 microphones online, bias-free, at audiotestkitchen.com. So first thing you might be wondering is why an anechoic chamber? And maybe before that, what is an anechoic chamber? Well, come on in. You might be able to hear the sound difference. craziest, deadest sounding room I've ever been in. It's really cool. A ringing, that's how silent it is in here. <laughs> Crazy. Amaze boss. I have never. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Your voice is coming from straight from your face. And I'm still just a point source. It's as direct, it's full. That it's... is crazy. Check out how much my voice in the anechoic chamber changes from when the microphone in the camera is pointing towards me versus when the microphone in the camera is pointing away from me. It's the way to capture absolute purity from what's coming out of your instrument. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> You're going to help people understand what the sound of all these microphones right, sounds like choose. on a voice like yours, you know? Right, right, right. It's so cool. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's and, really cool. And once we close the doors, so as I talk, you may be able to hear a difference that uh, there's no more reverberation, there's no more room sound to my voice. So echo, we all know what that means. And uh, if you put the word, the, the letters A-N, and in front of that, mean, that means lack of or without. So this is a room without echoes. Why is that useful? For Harman, when they're developing loudspeakers and microphones and headphones, you wanna be able to take the room out of the equation and only measure what either the driver is doing or the loudspeaker is doing or the microphone is doing. And that's exactly what we've done here. We've done that in two ways. One, we have captured, uh, I like to call it bottled. Now we're just bottling the sound the second it flies out of my mouth. Bottling it the second it comes out. Mm -hmm. Putting that in a bottle the second it comes out of your mouth. Bottle your voice right. into this totally neutral, flat, nothing added, nothing wow. lost. So the room is the nothing added part and the microphone and the, you know, this high-end AccuSound cable, the Grace preamp, that's mm -hmm. the nothing lost part. Mm -hmm. Bottled our vocalists with a flat or neutral microphone, in this case, a Sheps MK2 Omni. And then also in another similar space, we used a DPA 4011. So when we bottle that vocal, we want only the pure essence of that vocalist to come through into the recording with no room sound, uh, reverberation, standing waves, any of that to color what we're hearing from that voice. One break, two hearts, three days forever you'll be gone. Really what we're doing is like a form of time travel because when we capture that voice, midair, just as it's emerging from that vocalist's mouth and head and chest, um, we're capturing a moment in time that for our process, then we are, we're, we're suspending time for a moment and then we're going to let that voice out into each one of the over 200 microphones in Audio Test Kitchen's first library of large diaphragm condensers. How we let that voice out one performance without any variables into each microphone one at a time is by taking a regular studio monitor and come around and see a picture of this. This might look like any standard studio monitor, in this case, an Atom S3H, but we have turned this studio monitor into a surrogate for the human voice and a surrogate for the hum the, uh, 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 an acoustic guitar by measuring its response and anything that is not exactly uh, pure, exactly flat, we've been able to, with the help of Harman, correct that with a really simple uh, filtration. It's very 
standard in our industry to make it so that whatever we put in is exactly what comes out. This filter will correct your reamp speaker so that it reproduces at your measuring position the same signal that you would have got had you the actual source. So if you had next to each other a person singing and your reamp speaker and you had your microphone in the same exact place relative to each, you could basically switch from the real source to the reamp source with this corrective filter and you wouldn't hear any difference. Sounds like a good filter to be using. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> <laughs> and this room being one that doesn't add any color, it doesn't add any reflections, allows us to do that time travel, to essentially capture a moment in time with a vocalist singing in here, and then to, to, to store it for however long we need in Pro Tools, and then one at a time, play that voice through the surrogate voice into each microphone at an exact position in space for each microphone. And that's what I wanna show you next. I wanna show you how every microphone gets placed in the exact perfect sweet spot where we did all of our measurements and the point in space where we did all of our corrections. It's that one sweet spot where we know that not only is the response flat, but also it means that when you're going through the Audio Test Kitchen library, every microphone, the only differences you're hearing are the differences between the microphones themselves. There's no difference in the A to D. There's no difference in the mic cable. There's no difference in a slight angle. There's no difference, first and foremost, in the human performance. So even the best vocalist, if they were able to sing the phrase, sing the song exactly the same every time, there's going to be subtle performance variables, which will, no matter how much you want to try to ignore them, will throw you off and think, oh, I like that one better. Or I don't like that one better. We've eliminated that variable. So the only variables you're hearing are the differences between the mics themselves. So let's take a look at how, um, what our process is and the methodology we've developed uh, over the last couple of years for positioning these microphones in, in the exact same spot. Um, we, uh, we implement two different lasers in what we call our laser positioning system. So this laser is responsible for ensuring that the microphone is placed exactly down the center of these drivers. And you can see, we make sure that everything is continuously calibrated. And this is the very beginning of the day. We're just starting out. So what I do uh, regular at, at the beginning of the day and regularly throughout our process is ensure that every laser is where it's supposed to be. We make marks on the wall, we take measurements, um, so that our positions are exactly correct and repeatable every time. So this is a horizontal positioning and centering laser. And I wanna show you why that's important. This loudspeaker has been a real advantage to us because of its directional, because of the, the loudspeaker array. These two woofers, the same information is coming out of them at the same time. And what they effectively do is join acoustically as if they were one woofer whose point source and acoustic center is actually centered right on this mid-range and tweeter. So it's as if the woofer were right here in space. That's acoustically how the speaker op operates. So that means that when we place a microphone dead center in between there, we're actually getting the low frequencies, mids and highs all arriving at the same time right here um, at where the microphone is positioned in the sweet spot. Um, now the second laser over here, this is interesting because a quality you may notice about the, the, the way this room is constructed. There are compressed fiberglass wedges all around. This whole room is a steel box that's isolated and separate from the building. So it's not prone to external vibrations. It's not prone to, uh, there's no sound that will, that will allow, uh, be allowed in here. Um, but there's an interesting consequence of that. How do you walk on a surface that is foam wedges? So someone came up with this brilliant idea of creating a floating floor that's a, a little bit like walking on an old bed spring. So these are just steel cables that are attached to the wall and they will subtly, we found they will very, very subtly pull at the walls. Um, and so we can't mount our laser 
our, our horizontal laser here um, to the wall because it'll throw it off as we walk around. But we can mount it to the ceiling. So we have, <laughs> this is this is like our, our, our laser marionette. It's suspended and is actually uh, hitting an exact point in space over here. If we follow the, the laser beams, it's hitting the exact point in space that we want to. Next thing I do, I'll show you how where the rubber meets the road and how these two lasers help me position this mic in the exact right spot. So I've got my 414 with a shock mount and a quick clip. First thing I do when I walk into the room is I grab the mic cable and plug it in. This is a phantom powered microphone. So um, uh, we'll power it up um, after we position the mic. And that quick clip goes in there. We make sure it's connected. And I'm just gonna step to the side a little bit here so you can see how the lasers are interacting with it right now. You can see that we're pretty close on the rear centering. We're a little high and we're a little far forward. So I'll show you how that gets adjusted. So first thing I'm gonna do is get it a little closer front to back. And I just, um, I'll, I'll show you guys that this latch leg stand actually really helps us position the microphones because not only is it a really um, sturdy, robust stand, and where, wherever you lock it in, it just stays, but it also allows me to isolate um, the movements um, down to one direction at a time. So I'm able to just very easily slide forward and back without adjusting the height, without adjusting the, the, the angle or the pitch. I'm gonna adjust the height right now and get this microphone a little bit lower. And it's funny because as I'm talking on, on this video, I can hear that I'm talking kind of loud because normally when you're talking in a room, you get acoustic feedback. You know, you get a bounce off the walls and you can kind of tell from those reflections and echoes how loud your voice is. But right now my voice is, uh, I'm getting no feedback. So I'm kind of like, I'm almost like overdriving my voice. Uh, okay, so now you can see that we've hit an interesting point here. So we've hit a white strip of tape on the side. Now that does not come with the mic, as you know. That's a mark that we made in advance that a lot that, um, you know, with some of these uh, microphone grills, they're really opaque and it's hard to see exactly where the diaphragm or the capsule of the mic is. And we're not just making sure that every microphone is in the exact same position as the next one. We're making sure that every mic diaphragm is in the exact same position as the next one. Then we can be sure that um, it's getting the exact same information. So uh, this white uh, strip of tape doesn't have any acoustic effect on the microphone, but what it does is it, it, it gives us a guide uh, for where to paint that laser line. Um, and, and, and it tells us exactly where the, the center height-wise um, of, of the diaphragm is. And you can see that I'm a little high compared to what the tape strip is, but I always, for every microphone, I also, um, I double check and see where the laser is painting across the diaphragm, if I can see it through the, through the grill. And in this case, I can, the, the tape is really accurate. So I'm gonna lower the stand um, to be right there on the spot. I just have to raise it a touch. And it's really nice. I can get just such really good accuracy out of the latch leg. Um, and now I'm a touch high on the mic. Gonna bring that down just a smidgen. And meanwhile, I'm watching these other angles and I'll show you from this direction, one other point of adjustment. And that is this rear laser to give me my centering left, right. You'll see that laser's bouncing a little bit. That's because it's connected just ever so subtly also to the suspended floor. Um, but we created, if, if you pan down here, you can see that we created a, a microphone stand platform that is attached to this um, speaker stand platform right here, which is really the only point in the room that's anchored to the foundation of this anechoic chamber. So that's allowed us to have a really stable starting point for um, our mic stand. Um, but even so, there's a little bit of interaction 
um, when we move around the room and it makes that rear laser bounce a bit, but it settles into place after a second. So another, another um, adjustment I make is I, I come to the front and when I say I, there's a, there's a whole team of us here with Audio Test Kitchen, each with our own uh, reamp chamber. My next step here is to make sure that the left-right centering is happening and I can come down and again, I have a, a strip of tape here to help me, to help guide me and make sure that I'm centered on this, on this capsule from, from this side. And I can see that that same laser light is painting a, a guideline straight up the center of, of the acoustic center of that speaker. So like right now, I'm just right on the money. And um, you, you might think that like, you know, this, this is a painstaking process. How could they possibly do this for over 200 microphones? Well, we do it. Uh, and it's really important because every microphone has to hear the exact same thing so that when you're switching between the different mics on Audio Test Kitchen, the only difference you hear is between those mics themselves. Um, I think that pretty much, well, this is it. This is the day we perfected our reamp process. Oh, after uh, two years of inching our way towards this, I know we finally have results that are totally worthy of all the blood, sweat, and tears that all the microphone manufacturers put into their products that we can absolutely 100% represent them accurately and faithfully and make sure that when you're listening on the platform, the microphones as you're hearing them there are exactly what they would sound like um, on every one of these sources. So whew, it's been a journey. And uh, thanks to the access we've had to the chambers at Harman and the help of their their whole staff, uh, Sean Olive, Todd Welty, Omid, Dan. Thank you. Thank you, Harman. Thank you, Chamber. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Sheps. Thank you, Manly. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, James. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Lex, Fernanda. Thank you, Colin. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yes! Thank you, Harmon from Alex Oana. Thank Alex you, Harmon. <laughs> Good night. Audition these and hundreds more. Find your favorite microphone or just explore at audiotestkitchen.com.